Good evening. Welcome to another Wednesday in the Word. God bless you, GCBC and guests and friends. Uh, we thank God for this opportunity again. Truly, God is amazing. We thank him for his love uh, for the world. He sent his son, and because of our faith in his son, Jesus Christ, we now have eternal life. Thank God for Dr. Douglas E. Brown, the pastor teacher of Great Commission Baptist Church. Uh, also, we praise God for Dr. Lakedra Brown, the first lady at Great Commission Baptist Church. God bless you. To my beautiful wife, Patricia, I love you so dearly. And to my granddaughter, Miss Chloe, granddaddy loves you so much. Uh, we have been talking about the gospel and another gospel. Uh, we've used Galatians chapter 1, uh, verse 6 through 12, and you can see from this PowerPoint slide that there are questions that, have, that can arise uh, from having such a discussion. Uh, we have covered various uh, religious uh, concepts that are, are attempting to uh, show how uh, God wants to interact with humanity. And we've discovered some things that the scriptures teach. And to move away from what the scriptures teach, we have encountered various other um, developed literature that points to another gospel, meaning that the gospel within the scriptures are not uh, sufficient enough. And so in Galatians chapter 1 and verses 6 through 12, Paul says, if any other, anyone brings another gospel, then let them be accursed. And so we know that the gospel is the only gospel. Now, uh, tonight we're going to look at some uh, material. We're going to uh, talk about um, a religion that somewhat is a, a, a creates a lot of division, uh, for as uh, race is concerned, and uh, and I understand it. I understand how and why we have gotten where we are when it comes to these various religions, because everyone is really wanting to know what is humanity's purpose as it relates to this supernatural being who the Bible calls God. We know that there are Hebrew terms and there are Greek terms, uh, words, Hebrew and Greek words that explain uh, God um, and explains them in the Old Testament and uh, explains them in the New Testament. We know that there are uh, Greek words in the New Testament that talks about uh, who Jesus Christ is. And we do know uh, that in the Old Testament, there is a discussion about the Messiah coming. We know that is the Holy Spirit has been involved from the beginning. We know that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, are one. And so uh, to have another gospel, you will uh, to uh, agree that there is another approach to have fellowship with God, then you have to disrupt the Trinity, the God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And so we've had various literature that's been produced. You know, we talked about the Mormons. They have their own uh, book and other books that they uh, bring alongside. We call extra biblical sources to try to prove that they have another gospel that is opposite of the gospel in the scriptures. We also talked about Jehovah Witness who have the Watchtower material, the World Translation um, Bible, and they have developed their own literature and their objective with their literature, just like the Mormons, they're attempting to have another gospel, but we have the gospel in the scriptures. And also we have um, the, those that are, are totally against the scriptures. We, we talked about Wicca the other night, and uh, we know that that is a form of divination that God talked about, that it did exist in the Old Testament before Israel went into Canaan. 
So none of this stuff is new. God is on top of his game. The problem is, is Jesus, what Jesus told the Pharisees is, you don't know the scriptures nor the power of God. And so that is, seems to be so, in, that seems to be relevant today is the problem is people don't know the scriptures nor the power of God. Therefore, they're deciding to come up with their own concepts. And I get it. Remember we talked about uh, Paul on, the, the, uh, on Mars Hill said, well, I see your devotion. The problem is that you're worshiping an unknown God. And so uh, tonight we are going to talk a little bit about, we're going to do somewhat of an introduction of Nation of Islam and the Hebrew Israelites. And so uh, much literature with various ideologies have been written that implies that black churches have failed to provide theological direction for African Americans on how to function in society and be successful. Now, that surfaced because that seems to be the overarching, uh, let, just a minute, let me pause there. So there is literature, these ideologies that implies that the black church has failed to provide theological directions for African Americans on how to function in society and be successful. The overarching issue is the sin of racism. Now, when you look at the Nation of Islam and you look at the Hebrew Israelites or the black Hebrew Israelites, the African Hebrew Israelites, you want to notice a term called nationalists. Well, actually, the Bible is, has, gives us the best definition of what a nationalist really is when we talk about the nation of Israel. And, and our current culture, nationalist, is a person who identifies with one nation, excluding, excluding others and, and bringing detriment to other nations. But when we look in the scriptures, when we look at Israel, if any time you're taking Israel to uh, use it as a division among humanity, then you've taken it out of the context of the scriptures. And so that's going to be what we want to present, understanding that the various ideologies have uh, either they, uh, there are extra biblical, res uh, extra biblical sources that they use that are trying to create an, uh, the gospel. And it's as if the Nation of Islam and the Hebrew Israelites are saying that the gospel within the scriptures isn't successful. And so even uh, the, some of their literature, uh, Nation of Islam, we have the Quran, we have uh, the uh, Hebrew Israelites, um, or black uh, African American Israelites, or black Hebrew Israelites. Uh, they want to include some of the Apocrypha. Now, all of these various religions, even some of the ones we've already talked about, sometimes they use what we call the rabbinical uh, priest um, uh, input letters, that uh, material that was provided by them, and some of them just as well as the Hebrew Israelites and uh, the Nation of Islam. Uh, they also use uh, some of the, the Mishnah, the uh, Talmud. All of these are... Uh, material that has always existed. And if you take that material and try to bring it to uh, deal with uh, the scriptures uh, as we know it, the canon, then you're going to find yourself moving away from the whole purpose of what God's intent by bringing himself forward to say he is God because he so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved man so much that not only did he create the world, not only did he create man, but then he provided a way for man to be able to spend out eternity with him. It may seem that African American leaders are overwhelmed, leading some talented African Americans to question how to interpret what the God of the scriptures is saying. And I understand, especially, listen, uh, and I'm, I'm not standing here to try to create uh, this, uh, create, uh, I'm not trying to cause us not to have harmony, but the fact that it does exist, racism does exist, and it's causing not only division among other um, uh, ethnic groups, but it's also causing division within the African-American community. And so um, the whole thing, the whole idea that we're finding about 
the scriptures is everybody wants to know what God is intending for humanity. So uh, as we, we look at the foundational underpinning of some of the issues, uh, Nation of Islam, African Hebrew Israelites or black Hebrew Israelites, um, they, they have a, the desire, but uh, like Nation of Islam, they take Esau related to Israel, and then the Hebrew Israelites is taking the name Israelites, and they're taking it, and in, in, in it's causing division. So, however, the scriptures are sufficient, yet it's if, if failing to see God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in the scriptures, not only African Americans suffer, but the entire human race suffers. Uh, tonight, looking looking at mentioned religions, um, the mentioned religions, Nation of Islam and African American Hebrew Israelites, Black Hebrew Israelites, Black Hebrew Israelites um, we uh, we can see that uh, the power of God is, and uh, knowing the scriptures and the power of God can help lead us from this dysfunctional approach in representing what the scriptures is calling us to represent, okay? The Nation of Islam, African, uh, African Hebrew Israelites, and Black Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites suggest life for African Americans lacks in connectedness to resolve that issue uh, that is overtaking Afri African Americans the said religions approach are only wanting African Americans or people of color to know the truth about God's purpose. Listen, I understand. I, I get it, Hebrew Israelites. I, I get it, Nation of Islam. Your whole purpose is because uh, many of you that are founders of these, this particular position on what the scriptures are saying that you're from the African American race, and I get it, I understand. But let's take, let's let the, let's let the Bible speak to our hearts. It has been duly noted how slavery impacted African American society through the history of the ancestors. Although hidden by the academics, some issues were not taught. Sadly, even the liberty of no longer experiencing the brutality of racism. Racism has organized and captured uh, within the term of critical race theory. If you could give me that next slide, John. And so I said all of this for this particular purpose is that we're at the table. Now we're at the table and we're having a discussion. We've talked about all re various religions that are, are known that can practice because of lib uh, liberty freedoms in the United States and the, the state cannot tell us what particular religion to worship. So when you're at the table, it's very important to know that in this particular discussion, if I'm at the table and I got these various people with me, I'm explaining to them about, I understand how we got what we got with Nation of Islam and the various um, characteristics of Israelites, whether African or black. Uh, it has been duly noted, as I said earlier, African-American society uh, through our ancestors, we have sadly been misrepresented and, and sadly so. And so, so through the advancement of technology, having the word unfiltered, uh, having words unfiltered without theological sound worldview, it's easy to say maybe it's, so, it's some truth to the headlines. And so I get it. We're at the table. I'm talking to the people at the table. I'm saying, I get it. This technology that we have is so advanced and it's unfiltered. So if you don't have a proper theological sound worldview, then you can get caught up into uh, much of the hoopla that we have going on. Uh, next slide, John. Uh, Israel, Israel is viewed theologically as referring to all the uh, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let me read this verse. Uh, Genesis 1, chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of the, thy, thine country and from the, thy kindreds and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. You remember I said na nationalist? There's the word nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So nation, uh, nation, nationalists should understand it's about being uh, in line with God. It's about 
uh, being, uh, caring for those that are around you because through you, God wants to bless. And verse 3 says, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So we can see that God is prepared for this uh, this detriment that uh, slavery has brought into our society. And I get it. That seems to be uh, the underpinning for us to end up uh, trying to find how to uh, be appreciated uh, and being appreciated by God and letting the world know that God cares about us as a, uh, a people with the skin pig pigmentation that of diverse colors. And so I get it. When studying the, uh, yeah, the Israel of Scripture, you will discover a distinction between Israel and the church, okay? And also I explained to you that Israel uh, is a view theo theologically as referring to all descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, also known as the Jews. The Jewish people, Israelites, Hebrews, etc., are names that is relating to this nation that are beneficial when we view it through the scriptures that God intended for those, every one of those uh, uh, terms to benefit humanity in a whole. The term is not limited to the present political and national state in the, in the Middle East. Uh, the nation uh, uh, of Israel is, there is nothing there other than the land, and we'll get into that, which is merely a part of the whole, nor is it limited to those who adhere to the religion of Judaism only. So when we talk about um, the nation and we begin to focus on Israel, this has nothing to do with the current state that's, uh, well, it does, but it, it doesn't just focus on just that area. This is a, um, a whole, the, the ideal of the nation of Israel is to impact the entire world. And so, yes, they are having difficulties, but let me say this. Don't think God, not going to bring, God is not going to fix that and bring that together, and I may be able to cover some of that. When studying the scripture, studying the Israel of scripture, you will discover the distinctions between Israel and the church. However, you, will easily, you can easily allegorize various texts, so you want to be careful because that's one of the issues is how you approach studying Israel in the scriptures, which is a conversation that you don't have very much. Of course, we actually went through that when we studied, um, uh, when we studied um, uh, Nehemiah and uh, Ezra. So when you were studying those books, uh, there were some very important things said about Israel in those books in Nehemiah and, and Ezra. And so, um, but you have to really be careful. So father, nation, chosen, election, Israel, and Jew are very uh, important terms in the Bible. This, this knowledge must be derived from the scriptures and, and, does, and, and to do so, you have the ability to make the distinction of individual election and national election. Individual election, John, let me see that next slide if you would, as we begin to talk about individual election and national election. As we can see here uh, for in Deuteronomy 14 and two, um, God had said, John, could you give me Genesis 12 and 1? Uh, I apologize. I got a little off track there. If you could go back and give me Genesis 12 and 1. Okay, thank you. So now in this Genesis 12, I want to make sure that uh, we understand that what is about to happen here, when he says in that verse, it says, and the, and the, these and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God is about to introduce, God is, uh, is bringing into society salvation. And it's, ex it's not only extended to the Jews, but it's extended to the Gentiles, meaning anyone who's ever believed in uh, God's divine plan and did not even see Jesus Christ, but was anticipating the fulfilling of the scriptures, but yet they continue to trust God. 
then this begins to introduce uh, the, uh, the individual election and national election. Um, and understanding the, uh, thank you, John, on that slide, and we'll come back to that De Deuteronomy. Give me just a minute here. Understand, understand the English of is uh, the election of Israel is critical because Israel is the only nation called an elect nation. With this said, Israel election does not guarantee salvation for every individual in the nation of Israel. But it does guarantee that there is uh, salvation, there is deliverance, there is an opportunity that God is beginning to say in his relationship with this nation that he wants to have eternity, uh, have relationships with man throughout eternity, irregardless if he is of uh, the um, the tribe of Israel. And so, uh, and God bless you. I, I get it. I understand it's these passages of scriptures can be complicated, but we cannot bring presuppositions to the text. We have to let God produce the, uh, the, let God produce the truth and we align with that truth. John, if you could give me that next slide, Deuteronomy 14 and two. Uh, now we'll see it. We look at this verse here. It says for, for the, um, the, Deuteronomy 14 and 2 says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a particular people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. So we can see here that Israel is uh, to be a representative. They're going to be uh, uh, the priests and uh, to, uh, uh, they're going to be communicating um, the, they're going to be a, an extension of who God is and helping all nations to understand uh, what it is that God has for us through this particular nation, Israel. And so, um, and as we look at that next, uh, John, let me see that next slide, Deuteronomy 34 uh, and 36. Thank you. And it says, out of heaven he made uh, thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee upon the earth. He showed thee his great fire, and thou heardeth his words out of the midst of the fire. And so, this is God. Uh, Moses recorded how God spoke to him to tell the children of Israel who he had brought out of bondage. You remember when he talked with Abraham, he made a covenant with Abraham and he told Abraham uh, about some land. And he said that in that land had uh, Abraham to walk. And he said, he's going to give all this land to you and to your seed. And so here we have what God is doing is he says in this verse that uh, to make this uh, to show that God was involved, we wanted to point this out. Now, we're at the table. We need to have that discussion uh, that out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that God has began to talk to the nation of Israel uh, in their beginning stages. And so let me have that next slide, John. Um, now, this is the deal. One of the things uh, about, um, let me go ahead and read this, uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 37. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee, brought thee in, out in his sight with his mighty power uh, out of Egypt. And so as we looked at verse 30 of uh, chapter 4, verse 36, and this, um, this verse 30, 37, uh, being associated with God, uh, individuals uh, have failed to appreciate it, to, but have taken how powerful God is and use it as a weaponry to wield among humanity. That's one of the issues that we're having uh, with the, uh, the various religions like National of Islam and Hebrew Israelites. I get it, guys and, and, and ladies. I understand how we can have some confusion, but that's not the intent of the scriptures. God was wanting to bless us through Israel and not to take Israel as a form of weaponry to show, uh, to isolate various passages of scripture, Nation of Islam relating to, uh, relating to uh, Esau and the uh, 
the Hebrew Israelites taking the tribes of Israel and discluding certain tribes and using skin pigmentation to be the deterrent when we know that that is not what God intended. He had a plan. He had a purpose for Israel and hence making Israel a chosen people. We saw that in Deuteronomy 4 and 33. It speaks to the, uh, God's love for his commitment to Abraham his commitment to Isaac, and his commitment to Jacob. And so uh, not only that is his commitment to the seed that he chose. Uh, chose comes from this Hebrew word, uh, baharel. It's a verb which has an imperfect uh, aspect, and that's in that verse where it says that you are chosen. It's the, the aspect of the word uh, chose, uh, chosen uh, you've been chosen speaks of an action in the process, in the past, the present, and even the future. So that when that took place presently, it, was, it happened that God committed himself. He told Moses, that you saw the fire. Now you tell the children of Israel as he began to give them uh, the commandments. So the, the voice of God, which was heard is uh, from the middle of the fire. God makes a covenant and provides a father-son relationship between the Lord and Israel at Sinai. And they were disciplined in the sense that the manifestation of the glory of God uh, made Israel aware of its position in relationship to the Lord and thus inclined toward obedience. The ideal is that God's word was pre presented to Israel, a nation who he chose for a purpose, and he, he made the commitment through the fathers, and he said he would bless their seed. We saw what happened presently in the life of the commitment to Abraham, and we can see uh, it happening uh, after Abraham, and now we can see uh, we're experiencing it today in the future from when it was first declared. The discourse of God's role in history will has provided evidence through Israel that God is truly uh, does exist. The acts of God begin with the promise made to the patriots and continue through the exodus to the beginning of the possession of the land together accumulated at one point for one purpose, that God does exist. And when we fail to recognize that we're to bring glory and honor to God, it's so easily to take what he's put in his word and wield it outside of his purpose and wield it for your purpose. Of thus, we get uh, the, uh, uh, we get the uh, issues that we're having. Okay, so I'm not dismissing slavery. I'm not dismissing um, the issue of uh, skin pigmentation. I'll pick that up at the end. Now, Deuteronomy, the next slide, John. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7 and verse 6, if you'll give me that one too, John. Uh, we'll see here uh, in this verse, notice it says, Deuteronomy 7 and 6 says, For you are a people holy to the Lord, your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. And you know what? I, I get it why it's so easily to want to be associated in some sense to Israel in, in a particular way. And could there be some lineage connections to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Uh, that could be for those with skin pigmentation, uh, different skin pigmentations. There could be. And the reason I say that is because of geographical locations. And we'll talk about that at, uh, at another time. And so in this Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, the holiness does not mean that we're saved, uh, but the holiness in this verse comes from the Hebrew word kadash, uh, and it's to enter into a state of, of a sense of restrictions, character of uh, characterized by responsibility of their calling is a treasured position, possession. So what we see with this verse is, is that the holiness is saying that we're to live a life of restrictions. And Israel was called to do that so that it would bring attention to God. 
But we take Israel's name and take the attention away from God's intent of why he introduced the, the world to this nation, Israel, and why he made a covenant with Israel and all of the various terms that he uses. Thank you, John. All of the various terms that we can see that relates to uh, being um, uh, Israel, being a part of Israel. It's sometimes it's, it's sadly used and it's causing division. And so as we saw in that in that verse at Deuteronomy uh, chapter seven, verse six, John, give me that next slide. We saw the restrictions uh, of the characteristics as a responsibility of being uh, being a, a, the called treasure a treasured possession. And this next slide, Genesis 12 and 7, the covenant with Israel. Uh, it, it, let's look at this covenant uh, with Israel. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thy seed, will I give this land? Now we saw that God had made a, a covenant with Abraham and, and the nation and he, the, he called the, the chosen people. It was a nation, a uh, chosen people, uh, a seed, now land. So when we talk about the Israel, you, if you have any kind of discussion and you're talking about the, ch the children of Israel and you're associating yourself with them in any kind of way, then uh, if you're not talking, having a discussion about the land, the seed, and, and the blessing which we're experiencing now is the blessing because of Israel was the one uh, tribe that Jesus Christ was birthed out of. And so, yeah, there are some power in being associated with the Israel. I get it. I can see why Esau can be used by a nation of Islam. I can see why the Hebrew Israelites, African Hebrew Israelites, or black Hebrew Israelites want to focus solely on racism because it looks as if, as it relates to God, you got some kind of unique power. Instead of letting, let us uh, uh, celebrate in God that this, what is going on, that we're having this conversation uh, about God. And, and I, I get it. I can see how we got uh, separated by those, that very thing, slavery and skin pigmentation. And uh, the failure to understand what nationalism is truly all about. And we can see that when God used Israel. Now, the, uh, John, let me see that next slide. And this, ver this particular slide is going to help us with a very key matter. Uh, uh, so uh, Exodus 19 and 3, and Moses went up unto God and the Lord went un unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. Now we started out talking about Abraham and then we, uh, we didn't introduce Isaac, but now we're talking about Jacob. So remember when I said that that covenant, uh, when we talked about the, the ideal of the word, how it was in the, uh, that verb, uh, that it was in the present tense and how the, the, it said it was Baharal bah and how it had uh, essentials uh, aspect of the past. Uh, the present and even the future. And so we see that happening here. And so thus shall thou say to the house of uh, Jacob and tell the children of Israel. So what this verse does is it allows us to see God moving to bring together the uh, intentions of a nation through Israel was to have fellowship with humanity and he was going to provide for them a land. Let me have that next slide, John. So the the covenant of Israel is unconditional, and it's, it's not based upon um, Israel disobedience because they definitely were disobedient after God had given, made this, these, uh, the, given them the commandments. Exodus 19 and 5, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a particular treasure unto me above all people for all the earth to uh, for all the earth is mine. So look what God has done through the nation of Israel, that it's a blessing to all people, God's commitment to Israel, yet we take the Israel 
uh, the covenant with Israel and we create division instead of creating unity. That was God's intent was for humanity to have unity. Now, you remember I said that Israel, thank you, John, that Israel, uh, the, uh, the commitment to God wasn't uh, uh, tied solely into uh, Israel being obedient, but they were to be obedient. But what we'll see is you hear of, of terms called a remnant. And so, John, if you'll give me that, that, next, that next slide. And so I, want, I need to make this transition, and then we can speed things up. So Romans chapter 11, uh, verse 4. So we've talked about the Old Testament. We've talked about the nation. We've talked about the uh, Israel. We've talked about the seed. We've talked about the land. And it's all captured in the relationship with Israel for the purpose so the whole world could be blessed. Everyone in the world. So notice what uh, Paul does here, Romans 11 and 4. But what is but what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, so too at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. So when we talk about remnant, there are individuals through the uh, Israel who even though they were far off, they still trusted in God because uh, God has sent the Messiah, and so and it says, and he says that they're chosen by grace. This is talking about the church, and so uh, the individual uh, uh, salvation and national salvation, the nation has an uh, impact. Uh, for deliverance of Israel, but it's, it brings into individual salvation for everyone. And you see here it says, verse 6 says, but if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace will no longer be grace. So now I said this to, to begin to present a position on uh, the nation of Islam and uh, the Hebrew Israelites because they in some way try to say that obedience to the law is important. And so, uh, and, and it's created much havoc. I get phone calls, I talk to people all the time, say, well, my child is not coming for Thanksgiving because uh, they don't believe in Thanksgiving and all that. Now, traditions were given uh, to, through it, to Israel for a purpose, but they never was uh, given to uh, be a way to align with God or disalign with God, but they were to, traditions was given as a reminder of the national relationship that Israel had. And so when we talk about a remnant, a remnant is, uh, these are individuals that are uh, freedom from the law, as free from the law means no obligation to obey commandments as a sacrificial for sin. So the uh, traditions that Israel were participating in, they could continue to do those things as long as those wasn't a form for forgiveness because the law had become inoperable, but some of the traditions were given for a form of worship. It was to remind the nation of Israel as Jews who God was in their life, and they could pass it on to their children. And so when we do, as we're coming up on this event currently we're about to have, it's not about the the particular sources that are used for the event, it's all about the, uh, what the event is representing. And so Israel is a perfect example how we can dispel this fraudulent uh, implication brought by, by some of the other, re, uh, the nation of Islam and the Hebrew Israelites that are condemning our young people, our, our older people as well for participating in certain things, saying that it's, it goes against God. Well, if those traditions are pointing out the fact that we're doing this because of God, then that's what we can see with Israel. If you'll notice, uh, Paul's admirable with the contrast between the apparent hopeless state of Israel and God's assurance of continuing. So what Paul does is, in that Romans verse, 
he talks about Israel, if you go back and, and read Romans 9 through 12, if I'm not mistaken, and that's one of the reasons why we don't use Romans 10 and 9 in our gospel track because of the, the particular uh, context is dealing with Israel. And so um, Paul uses here to speak about this remnant. And so to, to let them know that these were people who were committed to God and they knew that the Ten Commandments were no longer operable and they weren't committed to that. It was by grace and God had taken care of the sin issue. The law reveals the holiness of God and provides a conduct uh, for the was uh, to provide conduct for the Old Testament saints. The Hebrew Christian seeks the, 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 these are a couple of terms that when you talk about Hebrew Israelites that you don't hear them say much. Hebrew Christians seek to be identified as such to point his or her Jewish ethnic belongings to a group or origin as a Hebrew, but do not adhere to the Old Testament. So the whole idea of being associated with the name of a Hebrew Israelite is uh, the Hebrew Christians do that not to align with the uh, so much to uh, adhere to the Old Testament, but just as a reminder that God chose this nation to br bring a truth about who he is. The Messianic Jew is a Christian who prefers the terms to be identified as a Jew, which is called by God and practice the heritage, understands it's not legalistic and consistent, and they're consistent with the New Testament. So uh, there is so much to be said about the uh, the Israel and scripture to help us to understand how they do fit into our lives. And could some of us actually be part of uh, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Uh, that could be. So Jewish practice cannot be based on uh, the law of Moses as an obligation for the law has been rendered inoperative. Uh, you know, they say, that they're the, uh, not, I'm not sure, because there are multi-facets of the nation of Islam. There's multi-facets of Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, African-American Hebrew Israelites. There are multiple fashions. They, some of them say particular things and some of them don't. But there is one uh, within the Hebrew Israelites that say that the Edomites can't be saved. But when we get into uh, Revelations, we'll see that there is multiplicity. There is, a, um, if I may use the word, a plethora of uh, nations that are going to be there. And so much literature with various ideologies regarding Israel moreover implied that the black church has not addressed Israel properly, failing to provide theological direction for Amer uh, African Americans and on how to function in society successfully along with the sin of racism. Because of the similar similarities of Israel, I get it how we can be associated with them and we'll expound upon how the nation of Islam, the, their position nationally was to about that land over there that Israel was promised and that how that was birthed. And then as we talk about the Hebrew Israelites, they're trying to uh, point out the fact of uh, the, the African Americans failed to keep the commitment and because of it, we suffered. Yeah, there were consequences for Israel for not aligning with the Ten Commandments. But then God had made that inoperable. So since it's inoperable, why are we still requiring that is where I don't understand. So if I'm at the table in a discussion, I want a, some input from those that take those various um, religions and try to um, say that as an African-American, uh, being a Christian that uh, align uh, with God's word, that I'm doing it wrong. And they claim to be Christians too. So they got another gospel uh, and they're claiming that they got the good news. Therefore, the direction offered as it relates to God, the pendum has impacted the people of color. Po uh, posing the question, what does God, the God of Scripture, say spe uh, specifically to America? Well, truly the foundational underpinning of a nation of Islam, African-American, Hebrew Israelites uh, is racism 
and it's caused division. Uh, the in-depth information provided about the birth of nation, the nation of Islam and Hebrew Israelites is, is very broad. I remember I, I, I shared that with you, that it, it'd be hard to just have, let this discussion capture everything that could uh, be offered uh, as questions by someone of those, uh, those beliefs. And so uh, they're, uh, they're very broad, and when the discussion, uh, when you have a discussion with these re uh, religious movements, uh, you can, uh, it's, it's challenging because there are so many ways to approach their, their theology. You got to dot every, t uh, if you don't dot every t uh, I and cross every T, then it becomes, moves from being a peaceful discussion to an aggressive discussion. And that's not what God intends for us. The only way to unearth the broad historical details claimed by Hebrew Israelites, Afri uh, African Hebrew Israelites, or black Hebrew Israelites, uh, is to uh, itemize every verse in the scriptures used uh, to uh, speak about Hebrew Israelites. And so let me uh, stop there. And uh, I just want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. I uh, wanted to just kind of expound upon how Israel uh, has, is within, uh, is, 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 the th is the needle uh, that much thread is being applied to it, trying to put together a seam. Remember I said my mom is, was a seamstress, and so uh, Israel as a needle, there's various threads that are being put in that needle, and what you're going to have is you're not going to have uh, a hem that matches. You're going to, because each time you re-thread it, it's going to be different threads in that hem. And so, uh, and, and let me say this, the consistency of scripture with the appropriate exegetical analysis, you'll find that God does not contradict his intent regarding God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every religious movement that insists that God is still revealing more than he's already revealed in scripture uh, have uh, misrepresented what has already been given by God. God's intent was for humanity to have unity. John, could I have that next slide, please? And uh, surely God is good. We know that uh, he's been really good to us, and we can see him in numerous ways. As we look at this uh, verse here, that God's intent, as we look at Psalms 24 and 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, um, the world and those who dwell therein. So we exist because God created us. He's using Israel as a nation to provide insight for us. And the psalmist says that those who dwell therein, we belong to God. God wants us to have unity. Let me have that next slide, John. And we know that when it comes down to anything that's disruptive, Remember what happened in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Notice that, did God actually say. So that's the competition that we're having. An old argument that happened uh, in the Garden of Eden uh, when Satan interrupted a conversation that God had had. And if you're not careful, you can be used by him. He's like a roaring lion traveling to and fro, seeing whom he may devour. And so God bless you. We'll uh, pick up um, a little bit more on some in-depth ideas of Hebrew Israelites uh, or African-American Hebrew Israelites or black Hebrew Israelites uh, and the nation of Islam. And, and I understand that the whole ideal of these religions, um, African-Americans um, or anyone of color um, or anyone in, in humanity, uh, the whole idea is to try to understand how God wants us to work together. But the scriptures are sufficient. The danger that we have is extra biblical sources and the interpretation of scripture and more so as it relates to Israel, you cannot take it out of its character that God has created within scripture. He's taken a very fine uh, 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 paintbrush and he's painted uh, in the life of Israel what his intent is, is to bless 
all nations. God bless you and God keep you. Thanks again for listening to this message from GCBC. For more information about our services and special events, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at ConnectGCBC. Or connect with us by checking out our website at gcbcfw.org.